So you want to do a silent retreat and you don't know how to do it at home. This video is going to be designed to help you practically and also spiritually. How to set up for a silent retreat and then how to handle the difficulties that arise when you're in it and you want to escape. So the first thing I would suggest is that you choose one of three time frames based on your level of experience. So if you've never done a silent retreat before, I would start with one hour. If you've done one hour before, I would do three hours. And if you've done one, three, a few hours before, or you've gone away somewhere to do a silent retreat before, um, so you've got some experience under your belt, then I would take a whole day to have silent retreat at home. So let's first talk about the one hour option and I'm about to do one myself. Um, so I'll try to give you my most um, pertinent information. The first thing I wanna say about taking a one hour retreat is that I think this is good to do every day, if you can. That's how I like to do it. <clears throat> one hour silent, time, maybe you don't even think of it like a retreat, but silent time for yourself makes a huge difference in your levels of anxiety and stress. It makes a huge difference in how much clarity you have about your work and your relationships. <clears throat> and it even makes a difference with things like your digestion and your sleep and your skin health and your immunity. So what I'm going to do is I've got about an hour and um, after I make the video, I'm going to straighten up my, my space. And that might sound kind of silly, but um, what I've noticed is that over the years, it helps if I have one space. And if it can be my own, um, that makes a big difference. One space where I practice yoga and meditate. And if I can close the doors, or like back there, you'll see... I, can't, I don't have a door, but I can shut a curtain. Just having that be the space where I know I'm going to practice or meditate or if I'm doing other things in silence, like I'm trying to learn how to crochet uh, or I'm going to read a book, I do it in that room, this room. And the first thing I need to do is when I'm on my silent retreat here in a few minutes, even though it's just for one hour, is straighten up my space. So I'm gonna make that little bed. I'm gonna fold up my blankets. I'm maybe gonna light a candle and I'm gonna put my computer and my iPhone in another room altogether. So with the one hour option, I would say turn off your cell phone, turn off your computer, turn off the wireless router to your house and if that's not already on a switch, I would do that right away, that you plug your router into um, an outlet that has a switch so you can easily turn it off at night, turn it on in the morning, turn it off when you're on retreat, even if it's just for an hour, turn it back on when you're done. There's something really nice about that ritual of acknowledging, okay, I'm disconnecting from the internet, I'm disconnecting from the possibility of getting entertainment from outside, outside world, electronic world, so I turn off that router. It's also been shown through many, many, many different studies and talked about by many experts um, that having the wireless on in your house is terrible for your brain and terrible for your body and affects your health on many different levels. So turn it off for that reason from time to time. Then uh, once I get my space all cleaned up and I feel like, okay, I've got a space that I can be in that's not going to remind me of uh, my emails. It's not the space isn't going to remind me of the laundry. The space isn't going to remind me of doing the dishes or whatever. <clears throat> and it's not the front room of my house where somebody could knock and interrupt me. Then um, <clears throat> I think today I'll probably do a Yin Yoga practice, and I would suggest you do that too, because it's very conducive to. Silence. Silence helps make your yin yoga practice um, more effective 
I was going to say more profound, but it also just makes it more effective. And let's say you have an hour or 50 minutes or so after you've straightened up. Or let's say you just enjoy straightening up and you have a lot of resistance. This happens a lot. I get a lot of resistance to practicing and I feel like, oh, I got to straighten up another thing, even just in this small little room. Uh, then maybe you only end up doing half an hour of yin yoga, but I think that's okay. And then I'm going to look over at my yin yoga posture wheel that I've taped to the wall and I'll pick a sequence to do. I'll use this little timer I have called the Enso Pearl Timer, timer from Salubrion. That way I can time my yin yoga poses without having my phone. My phone is downstairs in the other space. And that for me, even if I have it on airplane mode, I mean, I've done that. You can do that. Keep your phone in your space. Put it on airplane mode. Use that as your timer. But it's really tempting to turn that airplane mode off when you have the impulse to um, check your email or plan something for your family or your work or whatever. So I use a different timer that doesn't have internet or phone on it. And then I'll probably take a nice long shavasana it up done and by the end of that hour I can guarantee that I feel like a different person and that to some degree my nervous system has um, calmed down second option I would guide you toward let's say you've gotten a few one-hour retreats under your belt and you feel comfortable with being in silence you've uh, started to observe your tendency to want to escape and exit. You've gotten over this belief that you have to always be available for everyone at every single moment of the day. The one hour retreat will get you there. Um, you might resist it a lot and at first you might feel like I have to have my cell phone in my room because what if someone calls me? And I've done that before and I've realized there need to be other contacts. You know, even my uh, two-year-old son. He's at a summer camp daycare kind of thing and when he first started going I was terrified. What if they called me and I wasn't available? Well they have secondary contacts. They could call my husband, they could call his grandma, they could call my friend. And so you're gonna have to probably talk yourself through that and remind yourself that you actually don't need to be available for everyone at every moment and if you think you do have to be available for everyone at every moment, I would look at that in a very deep and humble and honest way because there's some kind of control going on there, in my opinion. At least that's what I've seen. And, and we just can't. Our nervous systems actually just can't always be on or available. So let's say you start working with that and you start to feel like, okay, I get it. I, the, the world is not going to end if I turn my cell phone off for an hour. Then you commit to doing three hours. And I would do this um, at a time when you can be at home by yourself. The one hour retreat you can do when people are in the house as long as you have you know, the doors closed. I found that that will work. It's harder if you hear them. Uh, in other rooms of your house, but it can still work. The three hour option, I would say, kick everybody out of your house or go somewhere where you can be by yourself. And that could be at a yoga studio and you could ask them, hey, can I, can I rent your studio for, I don't know, 20 bucks an hour and do a retreat here by myself? Or you go to a friend's house who's out of town and you spend three hours there or you go to your local park and you spend three hours there. Um, so what I mean is that if you have three hours, I would suggest you try to do it in a place where you don't have to be confined to one room. You're going to need to use the bathroom. You're probably going to need to have some water or get something to eat. You're going to want and it would be helpful to move your body more, take a walk outside. So that three hour retreat could look similar to the one hour in that you start at home in your space. And let's say you do a practice, a yin yoga practice or a yang yoga practice, your cell phone's off, your computer's off. And, um, and then maybe you get up and you go for a walk. You can drive yourself there. 
You could have your phone in your car just in case anything happens, but have it off. Not on airplane mode, but off. So it's really there just as a backup. And then you go for a walk in quiet in nature somewhere. If you can be under the trees, that's excellent because the trees and the ground and the air and the forest and the woodlands, they do something to us. They really recharge our batteries and they really connect us back to our essence. So if you've got three hours, I would include some time in nature. Um, and that could be if it's freezing cold out, it could be if it's warm out, doesn't matter, just dress appropriately. And then I would probably come back and either take a rest. I'm all for resting on retreat. Um, you could listen to those guided meditations that I made, the Mapping the Meridian CD. You can download on my website or get on iTunes. And what I've been doing in my last longer silent retreat, I actually put all the guided meditations that I wanted to listen to on CDs. And I bought a used Sony walkman discman thing um on craigslist so that i didn't have to turn on my computer or turn on my iphone to listen to guided meditations or guided yoga practices so you can do that and so you do maybe your one hour yin practice at home you go for your walk then you come back you lay down and you do a guided meditation for your liver meridian or a guided yoga nidra that you get from someone else. Um, and then you just slowly make your way back into the world. And for me, be, having time in my kitchen is a nice transition. So if I was doing that three hour retreat, I probably wouldn't just be in practice, like in formal practice, meaning yin yoga, walking meditation, or recline meditation. I might only do that for two hours and 40 minutes, let's say. And then I would build in like a little 20 minute buffer, 10, 30 something, little buffer of time that feels right for you to be um, eyes open, interacting with your surroundings. And for me, the kitchen is the perfect place to do that. So I might go and make myself a cup of tea or if it's lunch or dinner time, then start to prepare my lunch or my dinner, but still in silence so that I don't uh, come out of my retreat, so to speak, and then immediately right back onto my computer to check emails or immediately right back to interacting with my husband or immediately right back to having to drive and get uh, in the car to go work or something. So those are my thoughts. I hope you find them helpful. Um, take one hour, three hours, or a whole day and because this talk has gotten so long I think I'm gonna make you a whole other video in a couple weeks about how to do a full day retreat and if you would like to attend one in person with me I have a um, one day I think it's 12 to 9 o'clock retreat coming up called unplug and unwind a silent yin yoga and meditation retreat and I would love to see you there and practice with you there meet you in person and talk about um, the beauty of taking some time in quiet on a regular basis. Have a beautiful day. Thank you so much for watching. Namaste.